Okay, so today we're going to be having a quick look at some of the new uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud features that have recently been released. So the first feature we're going to look at is uh, actually a desktop connector one. So additional functionality has been added which allows you to view uh, files online. So if I were to come in here, find something I'm interested in, and then I can right click on it, and I've got the view online option. So obviously if you work in desktop connector uh, regularly, that's quite useful. And especially if you then want to view like a model file or something you don't have the, uh, the desktop software to open. So you click on it, it's gonna open it straight up in, in your project and you'll be able to view it like you would ordinarily. So we're now going to move on and look at some new functionality within build. So the first of which is a, a feature around photos. So there's now an auto tagging uh, function. It's currently in beta, but it is there. You can start to see it, use it, um, try it, etc. So as you can see, uh, it's currently in beta. You can switch that on and off. Um, and it's really simple. As photographs get added, um, it's gonna try and use machine learning to identify the contents of them. So if I just drag these four in here, we can have a look and see how it gets on. So if I open this one up, we can see the auto tags that have been applied. So floor finish, switches, outlets, seems quite reasonable. And if we uh, just scroll through the other ones, so same again. This one has highlighted as a sink. And that one's recognized that we're looking at conduit. So that's potentially a really useful functionality. Um, it's doing this automatically in the background, there's nothing to be set up. So potentially some uh, really useful stuff there. Um, while we're here though, that another new feature with photographs is the ability to reverse reference them. So before you had to uh, create an item, uh, so for example, assets, forms, sheets, submittals, you had to create the, the photograph on them. You can now do it the other way around. We can have a photograph in here and then we can uh, reference something else within the system. So for example, I can come in here and uh, relate it back to an asset or and um, a form or a submit or etc. So if we move on, uh, some changes to the way we can interact with issues. So potentially um, really useful new feature that um, you used to be able to do in, in the likes of three, in 360, uh, bulk editing and also bulk deleting. So now if you need to make changes to a whole raft of issues in one go, for example, reassigning them to a different subcontractor, you can select the ones you need to, and then you can add, edit all of those um, fields in, in one go. So that's again, really useful. In the form section, um, a further update now allows us to import existing forms from plan grid. So we already had the functionality to import from other um, Autodesk build projects. We can now do the same from for uh, users who've moved over from plan grid. So again, really simple, just within the templates area, and it's a new new option under import here. And you just need to navigate to your project and bring in the forms that you you're interested in. So if we move on now, we're going to have a look at some changes within design collaboration. So again, interesting new feature in that is called watch lists. So watch lists give you the ability to monitor um, the models. So as an MEP designer, you may be interested in the architectural model and actual, and um, more importantly, very specific items within it. So you can see here I've created watch groups for ceilings, for doors, for internal walls. And as the architect updates their model, going to flag here exactly what's changed within these groups and you can actually go down to, um, to almost family level within 
So if you click on these, it takes us to the change visualization engine um, and it specifically highlights our watch groups that we've created. So obviously there's a good way of quickly getting visibility of the changes that are genuinely important to us because um, obviously there's lots and lots of changes that goes on in design. This helps us to pick out the ones that are really key for us. And the final thing I want to look at today um, is actually at account level. So it's some changes in the templates. So templates being the ability to create yourself a, a, a project that you can then copy. Um, what's happened now is they've broadened the, the range of things that can be set within that template. So within docs, so we can create our folder structure. We're able to set custom attributes here. We can create custom attributes. And we can also configure issue types and categories. Within build, we can create and organize form folders and configure form templates. For RFIs, we can set up RFI roles and permissions. We can set the RFI workflow to be used. We can add custom RFI fields and also control um, whether closed RFIs can be opened. And finally, a, a new feature as well is the ability now to control the visibility of closed RFIs. So whether it's purely the people that have been involved or whether once it's closed, it's available for everybody to view. Within submittals, we can configure the role-based permissions, uh, custom responses, and also edit the uh, submittal types. And within assets, we can now configure the categories, custom fields, and status sets. And we can also map those custom fields and status sets to the, to the correct categories. And lastly, we now have the ability to create some templates within Takeoff. So we can configure the project settings for packages, including measurement systems, classifications, and definitions for takeoff types.